If you've ever been curious about which app someone's running on their phone or needed to know what vulnerabilities might be present, we'll show you how to analyze traffic with Wireshark and determine what app someone is running on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you know the password to a Wi-Fi network, it gives you a lot of control. One thing you can do is examine the traffic of other people that are sharing the same Wi-Fi connection, because once you know that password, you can effectively decrypt the traffic that they are running through the network themselves. Now, this is useful if you need to determine the kinds of apps that someone is running, or even see in real time more or less the kinds of services someone is accessing. While you won't be able to access the actual content of that messages, provided it's actually secured with TLS, you will be able to see which services they're connecting to. So if you want a running list of applications or services someone is using in real time, this is by far the best and easiest way to do so. Now, in order to do this, you need to have Wireshark installed. And on macOS, this works just right out of the box. You might need to get a card that can go into wireless monitor mode, because that's essential for being able to do this. Because if your card doesn't uh, support this mode, you simply will only be able to see traffic from your own device, and that is not very useful or interesting for this application. Once you have a computer with a wireless network adapter or an external wireless network adapter that supports wireless monitor mode, then we can begin. And also, if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. Now today, we're going to take a look at the wireless traffic of a specific device, and our intention is to decrypt it and be able to see what that person is up to. Now this can mean the various apps that they're running, it could be push notifications they're getting, phone calls they're getting maybe on Signal, all the various things that you can tell via metadata about maybe the DNS requests, HTTP requests, and other things that are going on in the background. Now this will not only definitively fingerprint the phone or smartphone that you're going after, it will also be able to do things like tell what services the person is using. And if we know that they're using maybe a hacked app or they're using an old version of something, we might be able to just attack that outright. So it always helps to know what our target is using. And also this is a handy way of maybe figuring out what someone uh, is doing if they're on their phone all the time and you're curious, you can just go ahead and run something like this and see exactly what they're up to at any given time. So the first step is having the Wi-Fi password. And this is going to be the hardest part because once you have this, uh, it's pretty easy from here. Now, of course, you can get the Wi-Fi password by following any of our other guides. I'm not gonna go into that today, but for now, let's say you have it or you have permission to have it already. So you'll need to go to, and again, this is actually, the, this is optional, but I prefer to do it because I have better results. Um, you can go to wireshark.org slash tools slash WPA-PSK and um, it'll actually generate a Wi-Fi PSK for you. Now, this is the pre-shared key, and this is basically what is used to uh, do the encryption that we'll need to decrypt on the traffic that we're going to be looking at. So to generate it, we'll first need the passphrase and then the SSID. Now, to get this right, I'm gonna go ahead and run a script that I wrote, uh, or it's just an alias that I wrote for macOS that allows me to scan the area. But if you were on a Linux computer, you can just do, once you get your wireless interface, it's probably something like WLAN 0. You'll just run sudo airmon and g start WLAN 0 to put your card into wireless monitor mode. Now, I don't need to do that here uh, because macOS just supports this, which is kind of nice. So, uh, I'm going to type in the SSID of the network I want to start monitoring, the password. And then I'll generate a PSK here. Once that finishes, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And then I will be putting this into Wireshark in order to decrypt the traffic. OK, so let's go ahead and open up Wireshark. And we have now uh, half of the information we need. The next thing we'll need is for a device to actually connect, and this will generate a kind of per session key. You can think of it. Uh, so if we are spying on a connection that we haven't listened in on that initial negotiation of the key, having this PSK allows us to break into it, but we really do, do need to be there uh, at the beginning of the traffic in order to capture it. So the easiest way is to just kick everybody off for a second. Although if you're patient, everybody will eventually disconnect and connect to the network auto, you know, naturally over time. But if you're inpatient, you can kick them off really quick. Most people don't even notice because their device will automatically reconnect, and then you'll have the key you need to start listening in on their traffic. So we'll go ahead and start listening, and this is all just a bunch of stuff. We can see there are no 
uh, there's nothing that we can actually see IP addresses for. So we'll need to take a uh, we'll need to take down the epol e a p o l traffic in order to do so. Now, if we start listing in for epol traffic, we should be able to see when a new device connects to the network. So I'm going to go ahead and try to connect on my phone and see if that shows up. There we go. And I see traffic uh, connecting to the network. OK, so now we have a device that is connected to the network. And if we've successfully set the PSK, which we'll do in a second, we should be able to decrypt it. So I'm going to go into preferences under Wireshark. I'll go into protocols, go down to I E E E 802.11, and then go ahead and make sure enabled decryption is selected. I'm going to deselect it for a second, hit edit, and then go to WPA PSK. Now this is where you're going to paste in the key that we generated, press tab, and then press OK. Now I'm going to press OK, and just to be sure that uh, it's going to try to rescan this because I have issues sometimes with it not doing so, I'll go back into preferences, go back to the protocols, and then enable it. And this is just because I'm doing a demo. Normally you don't have to do this, uh, but I just want it to work. So if you see rescanning, then usually that means that it's managed to actually decrypt some traffic. And now if I type in DNS, if I see something, then that should mean, there we go, we've been able to decrypt the traffic from this device. Now, all right, let's take a look and see what's going on here. We have a couple different sources and destinations. We are now able to sniff uh, traffic from the device 192.168.0.41. So let's get to know our good old 192.168.0.41. So these are all DNS queries, which we can see by typing in DNS here. And if we click on the domain name system query option and then look at the query, we can see exactly what it's requesting. And that is really interesting information because it'll let us know what's running on the device. So let's go ahead and click through here and see if we can actually find uh, some interesting information about the services that are running. So we can see Google. We can see more Google, a whole lot of Google, G-Static. All right, you kind of get the picture. A lot of Google. Oh, here we go, Sonos. So here we can see two things. Oh, there we go. So we have um, AT&T. So this is an AT&T device. We have uh, Sonos installed. So we have the Sonos app. That's good to know. We have... Uh, Let's keep going. An Android device, we have Wikipedia being connected to. Uh, <clears throat> and so this can start to tell us exactly what's going on with this tool, or rather with this device, and what kinds of services are being accessed by the sorts of DNS requests that are being made. Now, one thing I can do is I can also go ahead and, for, well, first I'm gonna open up a couple different apps. I'm gonna open up, let's do Snapchat. And I'm going to open up maybe Eventbrite. OK, so I've opened up a couple apps. I'm going to stop the traffic because we're really taking in a lot. It's starting to run a little bit slow. And uh, I'm going to take a look and see if we can identify what is being accessed here. So we can see Facebook is being accessed, Bug Snag is being accessed, and that's probably a content delivery network. And there we go, Snapchat. So this is a really easy way of just immediately seeing what's going on, because in order to resolve anything, you need to ask for the domain. You need to translate it into an IP address. So this is where the large amount of those requests will be made, because you know Snapchat may need to change their IP addresses. Something might happen. But if provided there's accurate DNS, this will always actually be able to call back and deliver sweet information to their servers. So we can see it's connected to appboy.com. Don't know what that is. Don't care. Uh, if we want to examine some other protocols, this can also help. We can type in HTTP. And this can uh, really reveal some interesting information that's being exchanged between servers in a way that's not secure. So we can see there's not a lot, but what is here should be interesting because it can also include user agents. And user agents, here we can see somebody's accessing a Facebook portal, which is insecure. We can see, uh, let's see. Here we go. So here's a user agent. So this is Linux, Android version 8.0, um, Apple WebKit, and this is being accessed via uh, like Chrome. Uh, so this is all information we can use to identify the device, in particular, right here. 
the SMG950U. That is the model number. So we're dealing with a Samsung phone and we can even trace it back to the specific model number just by looking at the wireless traffic. So if we need to start looking for vulnerabilities, maybe how to route this particular model of phone over the network, this would be a great place to start. Because not only do we know the types of services that this person has on their phone and which kinds of apps they're running, we also, so that could be a good phishing attack or something like that, we could serve them over the network. We can start to dig into the kinds of requests that their apps are making to uh, different APIs and maybe see if we can start to play with that and introduce something malicious and maybe take advantage of an insecure app that's running on their phone. In particular, if they're running a pirated app or something like that, or if they're just running one that doesn't care about security, you may be able to intercept traffic and start to inject things or take advantage of other vulnerabilities. All in all though, this is a great way of being able to tell what that person who's just on their phone all the time is really up to. So if you want to see what they're doing and you're on the same Wi-Fi network, this is a great way of being able to dig into the traffic and start figuring that out. There is a lot we can learn about smartphone traffic using Wireshark. But that being said, there are also a lot of ways that you can keep your data safe and make sure that you're not leaking this kind of data if someone out there is watching. Now, the best way to do this is, of course, to use a VPN. This will encrypt all of your traffic over all of the various mediums you use. So even if you have to use a hotspot that you don't totally trust, you won't be just having all your data out there unsecured. Now, another thing you can do is make sure that you use your phone's connection rather than connecting to random hotspots if you're not sure about things. So if you have a reliable data connection, you should probably just switch to that rather than using a sketchy Wi-Fi connection. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. You can also hit me up and tell me any ideas for future episodes on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.